Okay. Watch over me. Grant me the strength I need. I might Ramsey's not need much. family fell from the aristocracy, and apparently the man holds a grudge. How it's anyone else's fault, that's beyond me. But one way or another, Ramsey is too dangerous to be left in play. Ah, damn it. The likes of I was trying to listen to what they said, that's the only reason why I got caught there. Oh, I'm all the way back here? Damn it. Okay, well... Actually... If he goes all the way back to the safe room... Then maybe I can hide these bodies where he's not gonna see them. Like in here. He'll expect the other bodies. But not his own men. Although he might be suspicious of them. Come here, asshole. I'll let him open it for me and then just choke him out. Boop. Just like that. Clean as a whistle. Alright. Now back to the asshole. This time not getting caught. I just had to look at the painting. Plants. Here's the save, and here we go. Throne room blocked off. Ramsey's family fell from the aristocracy, and apparently the man holds a grudge. How it's anyone else's fault, that's beyond me. But one way or another, Ramsey is too dangerous to be left in play. <laughs> then let's not do that. Just you and me, buddy. Just you and me. <laughs> That's it. Climb the stairs. Nothing's wrong. Your guards are just on break. Yes, on break. Such a fool. So secure. I can kill him if I wanted to so easily. The hinges. Walk right over her. <laughs> How does this lock work? Ah, clever. Maybe designed by Sokolov. Really? Corvo's ring, the seal of the Empress. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for me. All this wealth wasted on the Caldwin girl and her father, a foreigner. Emily would fall asleep in here after the plague. Nice and safe, her little room. If the girl, oh sorry, her Imperial Majesty had not ignored me at the butler's change of command ceremony, if she'd bothered to keep her appointments, I might have finally, finally restored the family to its proper station. Really, dude? My idiot father notwithstanding. See if he has anything else to say. A tenth of this money could have saved my family. Or a little piece of paper with her signature, or a word or two in the right places. Maybe your family deserved it. Did you know that? Did you once think about that? Alright. But no, I had to save myself. Three years turning each. Yeah, three years. I'm tired of listening to your whining. Idiot. All right, let's look around our safe room. Sorry, honey, but I need the money right now in order to get you free. There's probably a way out of here. I'd better take these. Bone charms. Excerpt from a book on sailing traditions and scrimshaw. What if this is the same one? Let's find out. Bone charms, a sailor's blessing, they say. The carving itself is a practice from long back. Passed from salty dogs to young greenhorns still finding their sea legs. In old times, sailors cut into the tusks of ice seals and into the arm-long fangs of the bears that roam the isles north of Tivia. Once the whaling trade began, 
practitioners began engraving the bones of those great beasts, rendering charms that sing in the night and grant some small boon, increasing a lover's vigor or providing defense against pregnancy. Of course, that's what the sailors would make. Crown killer strikes again. Ooh, we have newspapers. Dunwall citizens express shock and fear as yet another outspoken critic of Empress Emmeline Caldwin has met with a violent demise. The latest victim is none other than Ichabod Boyle, notable entrepreneur and supporter of the arts. Boyle recently wrote an opinion piece harshly criticizing the Empress for what he called her slipshod style of governance and her willful neglect of duties. Authorities are convinced the crown killer is the culprit, given the gruesome details left at the crime scene. As Her Majesty's most outspoken adversaries fall one by one to this notorious assassin, we boldly ask, is it now the duty of the royal protector to murder all who dare to criticize the throne? No. I suspect the crown killer is connected to Delilah's coup. Yep. Delilah the Witch. Whiskey Tumbler. Oh, it's very specific now instead of just glass. Here's my stuff. Out into the world once more. As long as you have your mask. How many people had forgotten this mask? A crown killer? Well, we might not kill them, but yeah. Nice. And we has gun. But let's put that away because we're not going to try to use it. We're going to try not to use it. Oh, don't tell me that the daughter smokes too. That is bad for you. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna just drop that. Yeah, no need to throw that around. Letter from Wyman. Emily, I didn't want to wake you this morning, but you'll forgive me since we must have said goodbye a hundred times yesterday night. And the only chance I get to see you with your hair all whichever way is while you're asleep. As soon as the sun rises, you'll put on your empress face. It makes me happy that I know your real face, the one that laughs at our silly rhymes. I don't want to go back to Morley, but I'm needed there. It'll be four months before we see each other again. I'll miss you, and yes, I'll bring you some white, lef white leaf tobacco for your hoka. Lord Corvo, if you're reading this letter as per your royal protector functions, know that I'm joking and perfectly aware that white leaf tobacco is forbidden in Gristol. Take care, my darling Emily. Don't go falling from a rooftop. I love you. Wyman. Ah, so she has a lover. And he's dealing in illicit white leaf, so I must kill him. No. Is that supposed to be me? Everything's burning, though. Ugh. Corvo Atano, the Royal Protector, the Roy yeah, in our time, part one. Okay. His parents were older at the time of his birth, and his father died in a lumber accident outside the city when Corvo was still young. Around that time, his only sibling, a firstborn sister, moved away to Morley, and the family subsequently lost all contact with her. Only 16, Corvo dazzled the people of Karnaka when he entered and won the annual Blade Verbatim. Spectators from all over Circonos were thrilled to see someone so young and striking from a working-class family advance through the duel after duel, eventually taking the prize. This unexpected outcome secured Kovo a junior officer ranking in the Grand Sirkonin Guard. As a soldier, he was involved in a number of conflicts against organized criminal groups, rogue city states within Sirkonos, and pirate bands along the chain of islands radiating east from Sirkonos. Sent from his homeland at an age of 18 by the Duke of Sirkonos, then Theod Theodanus Abiel, wow, that is a name, father of Luca Abiel, Corvo was assigned to serve the Emperor and Dunwall as a diplomatic gift. His Sirconan heritage made him a bit of an outsider in Dunwall, but the capital city must have seemed exotic and full of old world mystery. A few months after he moved to Dunwall, it is recorded that Corvo received word that his mother had passed away several weeks after his departure from Karnaka. 
So he has a sister that left early on in his life. It's not going to be a twist that um, th that Delilah is his sister, right? Because we only know some of her backstory. Crystal, Morley, and Sirkonos. So Sirkonos is the southern... Um, I think it was almost like an Italian um, or possibly Sicilian society. Hmm. Interesting. Possibly. Maybe you don't find it interesting. Gotta get my ring from Ramsey. I thought I did. Oh. Thank you. My fucking ring. Nothing will stop me from bringing you home, Emily. Nothing ever has. Oh, wait, there's other stuff here. Hello? I could have swore I heard something. Corvo Tunnel, the royal royal pro protector in our times, part two. Wow, I didn't know the other one would be here. In an act of rebellion, young Jessamine Caldwin chose Corvo as her royal protector when Corvo was 19 and she was 12. He served her loyally as a bodyguard, courier, and some say spy, before and after she was crowned empress. Though it was scandalous gossip at the time, it is said they began a love affair around 1823 when Jessamine was 18 and Corvo 25. The next chapter of Atano's life is like something out of a legend. During the time of the Rat Plague, when the empress fell, Corvo was accused of regicide and sentenced for execution. He was thrown into Cold Ridge Prison and publicly reviled. He escaped, and as part of a small conspiracy dedicated to throwing down the tyrannical Lord Regent, Corvo struck back at the people who killed the Empress and who wronged him. As the Lord Regent fell, the Loyalist conspiracy turned on Corvo, poisoning him. Surviving through some inner resilience, he located the true assassin of the Empress and fought his way out of the flooded district. Corvo eventually cornered the last of the Loyalists at Kingsborough Island at the Burs Burroughs Lighthouse and rescued Emily Caldwin, heir to the throne. The romantic involvement between Corvo Otano and the Empress Jessamine Caldwin was a terribly kept court secret, and thus it is widely held that Emily Caldwin is their daughter. Following the inter internship, Corvo watched over Emily as she began to rule the Empire of the Isles. I like how they don't say if he killed specific people or not, just that he he was able to rescue Emily. So, yeah. He cornered them, but who knows what he did to them. We, we'd know from what I did that nothing happened. The reserves won't help against Delilah, even if I had a way to carry it all Jeez, out of here. These things are huge. So these are just reserves in case something bad happens. Grab that, that. I'll need this. There's a whole bunch on the ground, too. <sighs> Nothing up here, right? No? Okay. Alright, out we go. You have fun there. Actually, you know what? Come with me. Ooh, I might- Ooh, there's some bolts down there. Since you don't have the ring, I'm gonna put you right here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put you on a bed. Come here. Have a nice sleep. I'm gonna go in here and lock it. Anton Sokolov made this lock. There we go. Now get in. <laughs> All right. What did we see down here? Whispers from the Void by Barnoli B Bellani. One. Why does it say one at the end there? Treats me on the physical existence of that foreign realm. Excerpt. It is a common story. A person has stopped breathing. Pinned under carriage wheels of some other tragic happenstance and is thought to be dead. But when the weight is removed, they make a quick recovery. But nonetheless, for a moment or two, this person was lost to us. Lost to the world itself. And what did they experience while in this temporary death? Darkness? Nothingness? No, indeed not. They tell us, as so many before have, that they were in a particular place and can describe it vividly. And who among us does not know this place? Have we not all seen it in our dreams? 
This place we share in the farthest reaches of our minds, the realm where nothing makes sense, where one is at once both lost and at home. The Void. <laughs> 